So today our webinar uh, topic, so Shay is my co-host today. Many of you may know him from doing some onboarding or uh, just uh, customization type stuff with him. But if not, Shay's the man for getting you help uh, set up in your in your business account, really all the configurations and expert in the shopping cart area as well. So I'm, uh, I'm lucky to have him on today, helping answer some of the questions that you guys might have as we go through the different aspects of the shopping cart and kind of go into more detail about like, what are these, what do all these settings do? What's all available to me? How, you know, what's best? And really, you know, I'd say takeaways for this for you, uh, you know, try to try to pick one thing that maybe you want to add into your business. Maybe it's uh, going through and setting up some product dependencies. Maybe it's maybe adding some filters to your cart will make sense for you, but you know, go through this. There'll be a lot of information. Just try to find like one thing that maybe you feel like you want to try implementing in your business. And of course, if, if you have any questions along the way, we've got the Q&A box uh, open and Shay will be responding to those. And we may pause and take some of those kind of mid, uh, mid webinar um, or we'll circle in and do some of them at the end of the webinar too. But Shay will do his best to write back uh, responses as we're going. Uh, you know, and then I'll make sure that he's really deep in a response when I say, hey, Shay, what about this? We'll see if Usually we can how it catch goes. him off guard. Yeah. 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 It's good. yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, all right. Well, with that, I think we'll just kind of jump in and get going here. So under business and shopping cart is where most of the shopping cart action takes place. Um, here's where you'll see what shopping carts you have available. This is where you can choose the right shopping cart design for you. Uh, so I guess... Uh, Real quick, for those of you who maybe aren't too familiar with our system yet, this is sort of an example of what a shopping cart uh, can look like. It's got some products uh, selected. Um, your agents can come in, they can choose the products, they can schedule online. Uh, so for any of those uh, out there that are new today, I'm not gonna go through all of the details um, of like what happens after you place an order and doing delivery. We're gonna really focus in on the shopping cart configuration stuff. Uh, but this is the spot where people can come in and order through you and book and schedule online and do do all the goodies. So we're going to jump over and talk about the configuration of how to make some of this stuff happen. So we've got a very uh, a couple of this a basic cart setup in here right now, just a few products, uh, a couple carts in here, and we'll go through and just kind of talk about um, Talk about what the different things are. So the thing that I wanted to start with today is you may have noticed uh, that we've got some shopping cart design options up here. Really, I would say that's more about kind of the workflow of your shopping cart. Um, there's kind of there's there's a couple of primary differences between these. So like we were just showing on this cart here, the Google Calendar um, scheduling. So this is all like real time scheduling. If somebody was booking this and chose one of these appointments, it would automatically add it to the photographer's calendar. And block and make that time blocked off for the next person ordering. Um, so Google Calendar enhancement, I would say most businesses are really going with this form of scheduling. But that's kind of one major distinction between the carts. So you'll see a couple of them that are named twice. One has Google Calendar, one doesn't. The Google Calendar enhancement is the one that is set up so that when you configure your Google Calendar and you want to uh, allow your clients to schedule in real time, that's what it's going to have. I would say the other uh, the other kind of key to knowing which cart design might be right for you is whether or not you have a lot of team members and if those team members service different areas um, or if you have different product offerings in different areas. If that's the case, I would really recommend the service area cart. Uh, what's going to happen with that cart is rather than like we're seeing uh, here where we kind of just started by letting them choose the products right away. With the service area cart, they're actually going to tell you the address of the property first. And that way, the system can make some smart decisions based on what team members can service that area uh, and then what products are open uh, for purchase because of the area that it's in. So, for example, here we'll get our address in. And again, that's going to be now what determines which of these products shown and also what team members are available in that particular area. Um, it is worth noting right now, just a little bit real early, and we'll cover this later, too. Uh, it's up to you if you want to have your photographer show on the order form or if you want to have them be hidden and just allow the system to go out and assign assign shoots. Uh, it's very flexible in that way that you can do one or the other. Okay, so now that we're kind of past, what's the what's the right one? So we have the service area cart, which is going to start with the address and kind of ask some details about the property. 
We have the um, team focus cart, which is going to start with team member selection. I would say that's a little bit more rare. But if you if you uh, have a team that's set up and and really you've got long established customers and they know which photographer they want to go with, you might start with a team area cart where it can just say, "Hey, I want to use Bob. Now show me which products Bob offers." But really, the product focus cart does a good job, um, as does the service area cart too, with being able to allow allow people to choose which products they want, and then after the fact, you can still offer up photographers. So typically, I lean either towards the the product focus cart if you know if you kind of cover all of your area maybe you're a smaller team you guys don't have a lot of things broken up there I'd recommend that product cart because it really just kind of gets them straight to the meat it shows what products you're offering shows what uh, uh, what's available shows the pricing right away uh, as opposed to asking them for extra information uh, but it does make sense too if you uh, say you don't offer Matterport in all your areas because you just expanded you may want to capture that address first so you know if you can offer them Matterport in the area of that shoot. Um, it'll also factor in drive time and things like that when you're doing real-time scheduling. Uh, so for sure, want to get that address in there, at least before they're moving on to the actual scheduling piece. All right. So let's talk about uh, payment collection on the shopping cart a little bit. And we're going to jump around just a touch to kind of get some of these general settings, and we're going to get into some of the details of setting up, setting up a product and, and going from there. So we're gonna to go to business and default settings. And here's where you're gonna make uh, a couple different decisions about how, how you wanna collect money from your customers and when you want to do that. Um, so over on the new client defaults, you'll see this particular cart uh, or this particular business right now has it set up that new clients need to pay a deposit with their order. And so that's an option here. You can have them always pay with the order. You can also set it to always invoice them. So if you were collecting after the fact, that's what we would do. We'll kind of talk about that setup here in just a sec. We're going to start with the deposit, though. So this is a, a feature that we have where you can say, like, hey, anytime I get an order, I'd like them to place a $50 deposit on there or maybe $25 or maybe you want to do a percentage of the order. So to get this set up, you set your default client billing option as must pay with order. And then you're going to see these deposit uh, options come up. And so you can do a fixed dollar amount or a percentage of the total. You know, I, I see a lot of businesses doing a fixed dollar amount and then usually setting it to about what their same day cancellation fee is. That way, if you're really trying to say like, hey, I want to make sure my client has put down a deposit, has some skin in the game. And if they end up backing out same day or, or having, having some problems, you know, you've got that kind of first bit of the order already placed. It also uh, collecting a deposit on the front end, aside from a fried, uh, aside from doing the full billing, uh, is a really good way to then have them have the ability to leave you a tip after the order too. So they've paid partially, you've delivered back to them. Now when they're going to pay their balance, uh, you can have it set up to allow some tips uh, to be paid, so that when they actually go in to pay the balance for that shoot, it's going to show them the balance remaining, but also give them the option to set up a tip if that's something that you want to do in your business. If you do want to enable that, you'll see there's an allow tips uh, when order balances are being paid. And you've got a couple different modes. So you can do business if you're a smaller business and you, and you want to collect the tips as the business and then choose how you dish that out to your team members. You may go with just business here and 100% is going to go to the business. If you do pride by product, the tip amount is going to be assigned to the team member instead. So the, the team member that shot that job will get the tip, and then you can keep an, uh, an allocation for the business to do things like cover your credit card fees that are on that amount. You know, here's an example of the business keeping 5%. Uh, and you can go ahead and make suggested tips as well. Uh, again, this one's by amount and by percentage as well. Uh, so you can do what makes sense for you. Now, kind of on the flip side of things, um, if you are somebody who would rather just bill your client the full amount after the after the shoot has been complete and you've delivered it back to them, you know, put that paywall up so that they need to pay before they can actually download. Uh, the option that you're going to want here is going to be must invoice. And so for this option, uh, must invoice, uh, you'll select it. And then one other setting that you want to turn on down below is that clients pay when the order is complete. So what this does is this kind of keeps the pay now button off of the things like the order receipt after they place an order, they get a copy of the invoice. It doesn't have like a pay now button on there to, to try to get them to pay because it system knows that you're intending to have them go ahead and just pay when it's time to download. 
So that's pretty easy to come in and set up. Um, you know, really whatever is best for your business. You know, we have all these options because uh, they they work best for some businesses out there. And yeah, so whatever works best for your business, feel free to get set up. If you are an established business and you want, uh, maybe you're doing must pay right now uh, for order or uh, or you're always doing invoice, but you want to switch to a mode of having them deposit. One thing to note is if you make changes on this page, it will apply to new clients going forward. If you want to apply it to your existing clients, you can use this roller uh, over here. And when you click that, it'll copy that setting to all your existing clients as well. Don't forget on the actual client details page, you can go in and control these client by client as well. Okay, so now we've talked about paying. Uh, we work with Stripe and Square as payment processors. Uh, you can set those up on the app integration page. Super easy to do. Uh, I don't even think that we need to pop over and check that out. All right. So we got one more thing that we're going to dive into before we get really, really deep into the actual product stuff, and that's sales tax. Uh, so from business shopping cart, you can click the set sales tax uh, button here. You can click it over on the left nav as well. Uh, and we've got a couple different options for sales tax depending on uh, what you need. So one thing that's worth noting is that... Uh, you tell us which products you believe need to be taxable. Um, you know, that varies by uh, state to state. Uh, it varies uh, internationally as well. So if you have international taxes and things that you need to turn on, you'll tell us the products that you want to actually charge those fees. Uh, the simplest way, if you're uh, in the United States, you know you need to charge tax in your state. Um, you can go ahead and just set your, set your state and set a tax lookup of automatic. The way that that works is we're connected to a service that will tell us what the tax rate is for the particular address. Um, so your clients will put in their billing address at the time of the order to have that lookup be based on their billing address. So you can choose <clears throat> which states you actually want to collect tax in, because obviously you have to remit that tax after you've uh, collected it. So if you're somewhere on a border of two different states, um, you may not have uh, enough volume of business in the neighboring state to, that you need to cl collect tax, or you may. Uh, to know that stuff, I recommend talking to a tax accountant. This is not uh, tax advice or anything from us, uh, but you do have the option to choose which states you want to collect in and how you want that lookup to work. Uh, you can also change the taxability status uh, state by state if needed, where you can do an override. So when you add a new state, you can come in and do an override. So if something is taxable in Washington state, but not in Oregon, uh, that's possible to set up. Uh, but typically, we just have the defaults in there. Uh, yeah, if you have other questions on on sales tax uh, or how to set it up a certain way that your accountant recommends, feel free to give us a call. We'd be happy to help. Um, there are a couple other modes that are outside of the automatic lookup. So that's the flat tax rate. So if you just want to set a percentage in there, you can do that. Or a custom tax rate, um, you can actually name what the tax is as well. I know that that's a popular option in uh, Canada for, I want to say maybe the VAT tax that's up there, um, but yeah. Okay, now we can get into the good stuff, getting into the shopping cart. So as we go, a um, couple things to look at just in general on a cart. So under the config page, um, you've got an option in here to say if you want your clients to log in before they can place an order or not. Um, it's up to you if you want them to, like that'll that'll ask them for both their email and their password. Now, regardless if you have that turned on or off, you're always going to capture their account information at some point during the ordering process. This is more about having them log in before they even start. So before they can see any products, any pricing, anything like that. Um, some people will turn that to yes if they feel like they've got a competitor that's really trying to like hone down their pricing list and maybe they've got a different marketing page that really handles kind of talking about what they offer. Uh, some people might turn the placing in order to a yes. Uh, typically, I'd say most businesses have that as a no, because it's going to still collect the information that you're going to need to be able to execute the order as they go down the process. A um, couple of configuration things in here that I wanted to call out. Um, you can pick any Google font that you want. Uh, you just start to type the name. If you want to see a list of them, you can go over to uh, Google fonts and it, you can see all the different options. Um, but that's nice if you want to match something uh, similar to what you're what you're doing on your website. Uh, lots of times, if there isn't a, uh, if you're using kind of a font outside of the Google font, you can Google, you know, font like X, and it'll tell you one that's a pretty good match uh, from the Google font selection. There's like a thousand fonts in there, so it's pretty 
pretty great and lots of options. Um, the share image is something that I would recommend most businesses get set up uh, that isn't isn't set up by default. So you come in, um, and so you'll see in, in this case, we've got the logo selected. The way that we were able to do that is we came into our configuration for the cart, and there's a media list button here, upload, edit. If you go ahead and click that, you'll launch it, and you'll see a page pretty similar to what you guys are probably used to of uh, uploading onto the actual sites. Uh, in this case, I dropped the at-home logo in there and then came back to the shopping cart page and was able to select that as the share image. And the share image is the image that shows up when somebody puts it on Facebook and it shows a little preview image or say that uh, I think iPhones, when you're texting back and forth, if somebody clicks to get the preview, that'll load up and have the have the image uh, there. And so I recommend, you know, do, maybe doing something with your logo or maybe doing something with a book now and a photo in the background, you know, up to you. Uh, I know you guys are all uh, much more uh, great at doing graphics and producing marketing things than I am. So I went really, very, very basic there with just the at-home logo. But you can, you know, really do anything that you would want to this image. You can put it there, um, and that's the image that'll get used for the actual share on the cart. Uh, we do have some Google Tag uh, conversion things. So if you're doing um, Google Analytics and you've got those tied in, tied in, uh, there's a couple labels and IDs in here that you can utilize. So for those of you that are familiar with those, I'm sure you'll recognize them right away. I won't go into too much more detail, uh, but it'll just kind of help track how your how your order form is going and what conversions are coming in. Uh, there are some look adjustment things, so header heights, logo widths. Um, that you can adjust. So if you want to, if you want to have kind of a different look from the default, you can type those in. So these are uh, mostly pixel, either pixel or um, relative heights. There, nothing too crazy. Uh, if you are using our business website uh, tools, you can you can choose to include the navigation. Um, up to you. One thing that's kind of nice if you don't have your clients logging in is to say is to add a client login button. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add that. And basically that is, do we have it on this one? No. So it'll show some headers. Once we open this up, uh, we'll take a look and show it on there. Uh, if you want to change any of the text, you'll see that there throughout uh, different sections, there's title text sections. You'll be able to see the defaults that are already in there, like order real estate photography, property information. You can click and override those and change those. Uh, really nice if you want to add like a little, just a little extra something to a section or if you want to explain something more. Um, in the location info area, you'll see state choices as blank in this case. You can offer state choices if you want. So if you want to limit to where you only shoot in a couple areas or you can allow the service area configuration to just take that over and, and handle it based on your service area configuration. For most people, I would recommend leaving that blank. Uh, you do also have the ability here to require things like square feet, uh, bedrooms, baths, lot size, so if you choose to have those required, you click the drop down and go ahead and say you want them required or it's optional. You can also take them off. So if you don't want to ever ask for the MLS number, you can simplify it by just saying, eh, don't ask. We're not, we're not too worried about what the MLS number is yet. Uh, in the filters area, we don't have any filters yet, but uh, if we did, this is where you can opt in and out of them, similar to product categories. And so that's a setting that's controlling it for this uh, particular cart. So. As we uh, get a little deeper into this and talk about having multiple cards configuration, um, we'll come back and we'll have some filters entered by then. The number of columns here, this one's actually uh, a good one to kind of point out. So this can, helps control how many product columns are shown. So in this case, we've got it set to showing two product columns. Um, you can have it set to just showing, showing one, uh, showing three. Uh, I, I like two overall, um, sometimes one, depending on the type of products that you're offering, but basically it's just helping control this width here. So if you do use a lot of text uh, to describe things, having a single single column might be a little bit better, just so you can have a little bit of text and not have it, not have it wrapping so much, uh, but it's just more of like a personal style type thing. Uh, this is a little bit of an important section here, the team members in the Google Calendar one. So here we're going to see that we've got this option set for first available uh, or team member. So what that means is it's basically a hybrid of the scheduling module. So when, when somebody comes to book a shoot with you, they're going to choose their photography. And now they're going to get an option here of any available, or do I want to choose an actual, actual photographer? 
So when they're choosing any available, it's taking everybody's schedule and combining it and trying to find uh, you know the appointments that are going to best work for that particular person. So in, in those cases that people are choosing any available, often they might want you know be under a little bit of a time crunch and they just really want like the soonest available type of person. And so they can take a look at the calendar and do that. And it's a mashup of everybody's schedule. Now, if somebody says, hey, no, I, I need to use Steve because he's my guy, um, they can pick Steve and now it's just Steve's schedules and not everybody's schedule combined. Um, same is true when they go say, you know, show me more, it's still just gonna be Steve's set schedule here. Uh, so this is optional, uh, uh, the team member section. So as we saw, we've got it picked as the hybrid mode right now. Um, you can say, you know, hey, I don't wanna show this section at all. We're just gonna have it auto choose. And the way that that works is it's essentially like picking any available um, automatically for the person. And then based on your Google Calendar settings, uh, it's going to give you some options down here for them to be able to pick and shoot. Uh, and then, of course, you can also just show your team members and have them make that actual selection and not have the first available option. Um, so I would just take that option off and they're always going to be picking whoever the person is. If you have a situation where somebody's ordered uh, multiple products and, and it's gonna take more than one person to do it, um, that's possible as well. Um, so like in this case, we're gonna get Steve for both of them, but if somebody really liked uh, Carrie, um, you know, you might, or say that somebody didn't have a Matterport camera or you have somebody specific, or maybe somebody doesn't have their uh, drone license, it is possible for, just for uh, two different people to be sent out to the job. And of course you can control that after the fact too, if you just want one person to be sent out um, easy enough to go in and adjust that option to uh, once that shoot comes in. But the schedule will work the same where it's going to allow them to be able to try to schedule both people at once. Okay, let's see. Uh, there are some options here. Uh, so like in the example that we were just showing where only, um, only Carrie didn't do the aerial photography, so there are options to to not allow that. So you could say, hey, I only want to show team members who offer everything on an order. It's going to you know, depend on your business, on what makes the most sense if you want to have things that are shown on every, where, hey, only show team members that do everything. Or if you have specialized team members that really only do video or only do drone, then you'll probably want to avoid that and go ahead and leave it on the any. Um, but that is noteworthy. If, if most of your team can do everything that you offer, then I, I highly recommend going for that every order uh, for everything that was ordered, uh, just because it just keeps it keeps it more efficient for you and your team and just has one person going out, it makes the scheduling a little bit simpler and cleaner for the for the client as well. Uh, if you upload images that have the product names in them, uh, or depending on how you have it displayed, you can uh, go ahead and say, hey, I don't want the category names to show. In our case, we've got them showing here. Um, but once we put an image in there, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about if you do want to turn that off. The other section that I want to spend a little bit of time talking through is this Google Calendar one. So this is controlling a lot of the settings uh, that are on in that actual Google Calendar section on how it's displaying. So things like uh, offering the best times first, that's what we're seeing when it is giving these suggestions. Um, those are best times. So in this case, it's grabbing the first appointment of the day for a lot of people. If there were things on the schedule, it'd be trying to grab shoots that were maybe close to that, but still worked out really well uh, timing-wise for the for the agent. Um, it really kind of goes through and, and uh, factors a lot of different things. You can actually kind of control what it's prioritizing in that case too. Uh, so when it's doing the team member selection or, and when it's making those suggestions, you can go for minimal drive time, uh, Least appointment. So if you want to make sure that your newer photographers are staying busy, you can have it set to least uh, least appointments or service area priority. If you've gone through and really um, kind of have some overlapping service areas and some areas where you where you want somebody to be kind of the point to the person who's getting most of the shoots there, you can turn up their priority and it does a good job of making suggestions and things based on that. Uh, let's see the other pieces on here. So it's kind of nice to be able to control how many weeks out that you're showing. You know, depending on the season, you may bring that in or push it out. Um, and yeah, so combined appointments would be uh, this is a this is a pretty cool feature too. So in that same case where we've got two different people doing the shoot, so we'll say that we had uh, Carrie and Isabel. The way that the combined appointments would work 
is rather than splitting out this availability into two, two different sections, it's going to combine it for one and look for appointment times that both Isabel and Carrie are available for and suggest those appointments to the user and let them be able to see that on the calendar. Um, kind of a neat one if you do have a lot of a lot of uh, situations where you have kind of somebody specialized who just does one one product or or something else that you can have it be just a single appointment for that agent to be able to come in and do. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch base on this particular page uh, is a terms of use. So you can drop uh, some text in here. If you'd like to just uh, kind of have somebody when they're placing an order, you know, agree to a lot of a lot of kind of your normal terms. So in this case, we've just got uh, delivery timeline is kind of put out there and the cancellation fee is put out there just so that they kind of know that on the front end. Um, you can copy and paste whatever uh, whatever things you'd like people agreeing to at the time um, right here. And you can also um, add a thank you message too if you'd like to have a thank you message that comes up. The special property message is if you're using service areas and somebody puts in an address that's outside of your service area, um, this is the prompt that they're going to get. It's going to ask them to uh, just put in their email address and submit a form, uh, but this is the messaging that's going to go with it, so you can't control that here. All right. How are we doing, Shay? How's uh, how are the questions been so far? Good. Uh, yeah, just a reminder, everyone, too. So if you uh, if you do have a question as Ian's going along, uh, just click that chat button down there. Or I think maybe chat or question and uh, shoot any question over my way and I'm answering them in real time. So, yeah, feel free to jump in there. Awesome. Thank you, Shay. Yeah, I have some good ones coming in. Good, good. All right. Let's do it. We're going to create a product, folks, finally, right? Do it. Uh, yeah. So. This is where we come in and um, so you'll see in this case, we've got both categories and products. So we already have a couple products created. So the way that you would typically start is you create a new category. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna work with this photography services category. So when you create a new category, you're gonna type in the name for it. Um, you can add this some description if you want, which would be uh, text that would appear uh, just below this name, which so you can give kind of a general overview if you if it makes sense. It kind of depends on if you're gonna, you know, do you want to give a lot of description about your actual product? Do you want to give a lot of description about the categories? Are you creating a category that really is more of a package and you're just gonna have one option in there? There's actually lots of ways uh, to do it. And depending on how you're doing it, you'll either add some text or not add some text into that area. Um, just whatever. Whatever feels right, and you can play with it. The stuff's really easy to change, uh, easy to add and remove at any time. A couple things that I did want to point out here. So you can add an example. So if you wanted to send them to an example photography page, uh, you can drop a URL inside of here. Um, you can also use videos. So if you have like a video example, um, and it it's possible for them to just go ahead and open inside of the actual shopping cart page. Uh, when you have that example in there, so they're not leaving, it's just going to get embedded in um, as long as it's in an HTTPS link. Uh, you can also add so header colors and header height. I just wanted to show this a little bit. So if you don't have an image for uh, for your category, but you still kind of wanted to have it separate out a little bit, um, you can put a, a hex code in here for a color. So if you've got a certain color of your brand, or if you want to do a couple different colors on a particular um, on a cart for a couple different configurations. I'll show you kind of what that looks like. We'll use this link. So it kind of just adds a little bit of something um, as opposed to just being plain, it's kind of nice. So if you don't have images ready or you're not quite to that point yet, I highly recommend just tossing in a couple colors in there. Uh, just kind of visually spices it up a little bit. Um, but in this case, we actually are gonna upload some category header images. Um, so you can use images of of any size. I kind of like um, the thinner images personally. I think that I think that they've got a nice nice look to it. I want to say that these are something like three hundred and fifty by well, like a hundred pixels ish, maybe eighty pixels ish. Um, but again, you can upload any any size that uh, makes sense for you. We're going to go ahead and just toss in these two images. And now we're going to go and take a look. So you can always view your cart as you go and as you're uh, configuring um, just by clicking the view up here. Uh, and so now we can kind of see what that change has done. We've got a couple images in there and now it's looking a, looking a little bit nicer. 
Um, this might be a case where with the with the category image names in there, where maybe you want to hide these category names here so it's not repetitive. Uh, that was that setting that we saw a couple minutes ago back in the config area, if that's something that you're interested in. All right. So now we've got our categories looking nice. We've got a couple of them. Uh, a couple things to note uh, as we go. So when you... Uh, we're going to create a product, um, but also when you do have categories and things started, you can just drag and drop those around and move them. So if you need to kind of rearrange things under your cart or you're not, not liking how you wanted, um, you can do that. You can also do that with the photography items too. So if you want to, to change the order of things, just drag them up and down, and that's going to change how they actually are positioned onto the, onto the page. All right. So we're going to create a product. And in this case, I'm going to create just kind of like an upsell product. And we're just going to call it uh, 10 photos. So creating a product, you do, uh, you've do you got a few options here. So you put in your product name. In this case, I'm going to add a little description because the these uh, have, have descriptions on most of the products already. So it'll keep it kind of nice and uniform. Add 10 additional photos to any package. Right, we're going to say that 10 more photos is going to be oh, $90. And that'll give us about another 30 minutes. You can choose uh, icons here. So for the actual product. So this is setting the price of the customer. This is setting our time on site. So how long is this product going to take? When you're using the real-time scheduling, um, it's important to try to get this kind of ballpark close to, to about how long. Because when it builds out the actual, your time block for that shoot, it's going to take um, all the time on site for all the products ordered that that team member is doing, and then block out that amount of time. Uh, then it handles the drive time kind of outside of the actual appointment. Um, you can choose these little icons here, and they're going to appear on your uh, dashboard calendar um, next to the shoot. So it's kind of just like a quick reference to know what was ordered in a particular order. Um, you can also set square footage ranges. If you do set square footage ranges, um, I recommend using the, uh, uh, the service area cart just so that it asks that square footage question up front and people can put that in. Um, you can set ranges, maximums. We've got it set up on a couple other products. So we'll take a look. Uh, also, one other thing that's kind of sneaky that people don't know, um, there is an active included by default. So if you've got a product that you want to always suggest that somebody orders and just have it automatically turned on, you can have that set to included by default. Um, otherwise, most of the time you're going to have that be active um, unless there's something else going on. You do have the option to have uh, free or hidden products. So free products... Uh, maybe you want a product for like a consultation of, of talking with them or coming out to give them a quote or something like that. And, you know, that might be a little bit more in your commercial use type thing, um, but that is an option to, to set up. It's also possible to not put a standard price in here. That would be like if we're doing a, a special product that we just want to offer out to a special uh, tier of client, you could uh, make it hidden here and then give it a price inside of the actual price tier. That would be like if you had a special package that you set up for a brokerage, you might want to hide the product from your general shopping cart, but still show it to them based on the price tier, which we'll, uh, we'll kind of dive into a little bit here in a second as well. Uh, this is where you'll set the general taxability for a product. So if you turn that on and you're um, in working inside of multiple states, uh, any states that you have turned on to be taxable, it will, it will follow this default unless you go in and do an override specific on the uh, the actual um, sales tax page. Under the team members tab is where you're going to set up what team members are going to offer this product and how much uh, they will get paid of this product if you're going to use our system for payroll tracking. We're going to go ahead and turn on Carrie and Steve, and we're going to pay them each, oh, I don't know, $60 for these add-ons. They're already out on the property. That's a nice little nice little bump in their pay. Uh, while getting the client a few more photos. And here you can see Isabel helps. She's the owner. It's up to you if you want to set payout amounts for yourself or not. Um, you can if you want to. Also, there is a nice little trick here. Uh, I guess I'll show it for those of you that have a lot of team members. Um, you can set a dollar amount and then use the magic wand to copy it down to all the others. 
Uh, and that's kind of a nice trick when you've got, uh, you know, 50 or 60 photographers in there. It's a good way to save a little bit of time. This is the deep dive. So you guys get some of the, some of the tricks. I know one that I forgot to Shay, Don't let me forget. We're going to roll back and show, uh, show how to have a product indent in after we kind of show it as an add on. Yes. Yeah. Sneaky. It's a sneaky little Easter egg in there. Yeah. But we'll, uh, we'll show you guys how that works. So we're going to go over to price tiers. So I've got a price tier set up in this cart. Uh, I know that we haven't talked a bunch about these yet, so I'll, I'll give kind of a brief explanation and then we'll actually talk about that section and uh, just a little bit as we get there. But essentially price tiers allows you to set uh, groups or clients onto a special pricing tier uh, that you want to solve rather than your standard pricing. In this case, we've got VIP clients uh, as a price tier that's set up and we're charging all the normal fees for this. We'll say for VIP clients, instead of $90, we'll make it $85, uh, but we're still going to pay everybody else $60 on this. Um, so when somebody's a VIP, they're going to see $85 as opposed to just $90 for that product. So dependencies are a neat thing, and in this case, we're going to use them uh, on this product. So you have kind of three options in here. It's either not dependent, so that means it's always going to show. Uh, you have an add-on product, which in that case, you can have it only show when certain products have been ordered, and then you have product removals. So that's going to be the kind of the, uh, the reverse of add-on products where it's going to get taken away depending on products that were selected. So we're going to set this as an add-on product, and we're going to say, show this anytime that these uh, three photography services here are picked. And uh, workflow tasks is another option that we have as well. Um, so we've got a workflow task set up for order and review and delivery. Um, you could have workflow tasks for if you want it, if you have an in-house editing team and you want to uh, be tr keeping track of where things are at. I would say workflow tasks are a good way for any internal task that you want to track uh, and you want to know whether or not it's been done yet on a specific order. Workflow tasks are great to set up and add. We're going to go ahead and add the order review and delivery. Anytime that this is ordered, that uh, order level workflow task will get added as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, other uses for workflow tasks as we go. Okay, so we've got our product added. Let's go take a look and see how we like it. Um, so again, if we hit that book now, that's going to open up this page right here. I'm just going to refresh it. You'll see, right, we made it in an add-on product, so it only shows when specific products are picked. So it's not showing here yet, but when we say, hey, luxury photography, we've got the add 10 photos. It's awesome, right? It worked how we wanted. But there's some, there's a couple cool things that you can do, particularly when you're trying to add add-ons into a shopping cart that I wanted to cover in this webinar just since we were going a little bit deeper on things today. Uh, so for the add products, we know it's, a, we know it's more of an add-on. We know we're just going to show it when somebody already makes a selection. And we can see that it shows kind of down at the bottom here. Once that comes on, we want to do something to make it a little bit more noticeable uh, and a little bit, well, yeah, just, just kind of stand out a little bit more for that particular case. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple changes. So first, we're going to add an indent. And so you can have any product actually indent in um, just by adding a space to the front of the name. It's very, uh, very secret Easter egg in here. But if you add a space, you've now got an indent for your add-on products. So let me show you what that looks like, and then we're going to make a couple more tweaks. So now when we click this, you'll see add-on is kind of shifted over a little bit. This kind of brings it out a little bit more, and you kind of get the, get the idea that this is uh, not one of these packages, that it's something additional that's happening. The other thing that I like to do when, when you have good opportunities to offer add-ons like that is, is actually remove the other things that are showing. So here, add-ons pop down. Um, but it isn't quite as noticeable all the way down at the bottom of the list, particularly if you have a lot of products in there. So in areas like this where really we know that they're going to be picking just one of these, they're not going to be picking multiples, I'm going to go in and set some dependencies. So for luxury photography, we're going to say we want this to be a product removal, and we're going to take it away anytime premium or basic are selected. We're going to do the same thing for premium photography. We're going to take it away anytime 
that luxury or basic are picks. And then we're going to do the same for basic. And we're going to take it away anytime the other two are picked. So now when we go back to our shopping cart and take a look at this again, you'll see our add-ons are going to pop just a little bit more. So now when that person says, hey, I want the premium photography package, it becomes the only selection in here. And now we've got our indented add-on where it's saying, hey, uh, we've got something else that you can add to this package. And it really gives it that feel with the indent and with nothing else being available. Now, if they say, wait a minute, I was just clicking that checkbox because, and they uh, want to see all the options again, when they uncheck it, it's going to go back to how it was. Um, but this is a great way to set up some add-ons and set up uh, you know, some options to really get to the point where you can raise your average order value by saying, you know, hey, what are the other things that make sense for people to be buying if they're buying this particular package and how, what's a different way that you can present them? Um, there's definitely lots of options and different ways to do this. You know, this is kind of one, one simple way of showing how to add 10 photos. Um, you can have photograph, uh, you know, entire categories that are add-on categories. Um, you can have, uh, I don't think we talked about quantity products here. So if we wanted to actually let them order more than one set of 10 photos at a time, we could make this a product, uh, a quantity one. We're going to say it's got a minimum of one. It's going to default to one. We'll just say probably nobody's going to add 100 photos or more, so we can just have 10, 10 options in the drop down there. And now when we refresh this again, you'll see that there will be a quantity option for them to be able to choose how many uh, of the one sets. That's great for things like virtual staging. Uh, works out really well. You've got kind of a per, per photo price for things like virtual staging or others. Um, quantity is a good way to have that happen and to work with that. Okay, let's see. One other trick that was going on that I don't know if you guys have noticed that I set up uh, I think in our Power Hour webinar is actually kind of a neat thing. So you'll see over here the aerial photography product is showing $150. So that'd be like a standalone, like, you know, you're willing to drive out and go take five or 10 aerial shots for 150 bucks and you're not doing any other work on the house. Um, but once they're already shooting, obviously it's, you know, it can be better to uh, go ahead and say, hey, do you want to add some aerial photography? I'll do it for a little less because I'm already there. Um, you can actually have those switch real time. So in this case, we're taking the regular aerial photography product and it's always displaying, but then it's a removal when another product is ordered. And now it's switching over to the add-on pricing. So to look at the setup uh, here in on the back end, you'll see we've got our aerial photography product, $150. We've got it set as a dependency and it's dependent on those three products. And so it's gonna get removed anytime somebody's buying one of those packages. And then our add-on one is actually gonna get swapped in and added into the dependency anytime that somebody's buying those products. Now, if I was doing this again, and, and I said, you know, I like being able to offer my aerial um, standalone, but really I want them to see, I want, I want it to be more obvious when they're buying that package. We could even do something like uh, dragging this product up into our photography category rather than our aerial category. We're going to say, hey, we're always just going to ask them to add aerial photography to any of the packages that they add. So we're going to add the add. We're going to add our space for our indent. And we're going to go ahead and leave all of our other configuration the same that we had. You'll see when we come back and do this again, now, when somebody picks uh, luxury photography, they get some options right away to add aerial, add 10 photos. You'll see the aerial services goes away because it no longer has any products that it needs to show by itself. And so it really simplifies and gets down to just this one um, area. It's a, it's a really good way, depending on how you have your shopping cart configured, to go ahead and try to offer up some of those add-ons. You can always have a separate category after this, too, that has more add-ons you know, like your virtual staging services, or if you do some social media services for them, uh, you can definitely still have that. I would just say that add-ons that you really want them to see the most, this is a great spot to be able to put them uh, just right there in line and have everything else hide when you do that. All right, let's keep going. We've got a, we've still got a lot of stuff to cover and uh, we've got about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit, and we're going to go through a couple more sections and some deep dives. Um, so is there any any area that you feel like we need to focus on yet from the questions and things that have been coming in? 
where I get to stick to well, my plan. Yes, yeah, so, so far, like you, it seems like questions are coming in, and then eventually you're you're covering uh, covering okay, a lot perfect. of them. So I think yeah, I think you're on the right path there. All right, all right, I'm going to keep it up. Thanks for uh, holding down holding down the questions. Feel free. I'm uh, trying. We'll, yeah, we'll spend a couple minutes here at the end, even if we go a little over to answer uh, questions real time. If there's anything left that Shay hasn't already typed out, or something that he feels like is just easier if I visually show it compared to trying to write a book to talk about it. Um, so before we get too deep down here, some really important things. If you uh, are a company that mostly does delivers or you don't always do a marketing kit included with all your packages, be sure to get your uh, delivery site to marketing kit upgrade price set in here. Uh, $19, $19.99, $15, depending on what level you're buying credits at. Those are all great prices to set. It really doesn't take any... Uh, any additional time for you to put that in there and it's opportunity for somebody to go from just a normal delivery site and upgrade themselves over to the marketing kit. Um, so that is set up and saved. Whoops, we gotta make sure that we want that active. There we go. You can do that for your annual renewals too. So marketing kits are good for one year. If you wanna have a price in there um, that you want to have them pay when they need to re renew, go ahead and just enter that price and set it to active. Uh, same thing for domain names. We're going to make domain names more like $25 here. And we're going to make it active. So if your client uh, has bought custom domain names, as they come up on their expiration date, it'll pop onto their dashboard. And that gives them the ability to go in and actually buy those renewals without you having to do anything um, for them. There is a, uh, a travel fee, so options. So underneath um, the service areas, you can set up service areas and set up your tra travel fee configuration. We'll pop in and take a quick look at that here shortly. Um, if you want to change the name of it, uh, you know, you could say travel charge instead of fee. Um, you could call it a service fee. Anything that you want, uh, basically what you want the name of that to appear as uh, on the invoice, this is where you can go in and control it. So we talked a little bit about pricing tiers and our VIP clients. So this is the section where you can create them. If you want to create one, there's just a button there to be able to do it. We'll just kind of take a look at editing this particular one. So you see you set a tier name. That's really for you internally to kind of know what it is. Um, same thing with the notes. You can add some notes in there for you or your other team members to, uh, that work inside of the shopping cart to see what notes are available. Um, tags are something that's just used in the webhooks and APIs. Uh, so that may not make sense for you. It's a little bit more of an advanced feature. But something that's really cool that you can do with uh, with with tiers, with pricing tiers, is actually allow what we call like an allowance subsidy. So say that you're working with a brokerage, uh, a local brokerage in your area, and the broker wants to pay for you know a certain dollar amount of all photo shoots that they do through you because they love your they love your setup, they love they love your photography, and they want to. Uh, really encourage their agents to use your services. Um, setting up this subsidy is a way that you can do that. So you come in and you actually pick the user that uh, is going to be the payer. Oh, looks like I just got Bob in here. So we've got Bob set up as the payer in this particular account. And what that does is anytime an agent's putting an order in who's set to the VIP clients, it's the billing is actually going to get redirected to Bob. You'll see down below, you've got a couple setups here for how you want to do that. You could say, hey, Bob's going to cover 100%. So that means that just always any order, anything that's ordered, bill it to the broker. Broker will set up with the agent however they want, or maybe do a benefit uh, on that. You might do, uh, like Bob said, he'll pay anything up to $500, but he doesn't want to go over $500 per order. You can set in a maximum allowance as well. Um, the instant charge and periodic settlement. So you instant charge as you've got a credit card on Bob's account and the system's going to go ahead and just charge that at the time of the order when the agent places it. A periodic settlement allows uh, allows them to place the order and then assumes that you're going to go in and do your billing to them once a month. There's uh, some nice reports and things to be able to see uh, what the brokerage owes uh, for what clients, uh, CSV files that you can download and send to the, to the uh, people that control the billing there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for this particular tier, but it's uh, it's really great functionality. If you wanna know more about it, um, feel free to reach out and ask anytime. Okay. Uh, promo code. So we've got a lot of great promo code options. Um, so let's just do, we'll do like 25% off. 
we're going to say it's promo code 25 off. And so here you can control um, when when it starts. So if you want to run this, uh, we'll say go ahead and starts today, but it ends at, uh, we'll just say the first of next month. You can also choose how many times a client uses it. We'll say you can use it twice in this period of time if you're somebody who's ordering with me often. Um, you, and you can also choose just max uses of a promo code. So if you wanted to run a special and say, hey, the first you know, 10 people to use this promo code, get it. Uh, you can set it to 10 max uses and run like sort of a special out on social media or through email or however you want to communicate it. Uh, but basically that's more of like a fire sale type of promo code use as opposed to just like a max per client. Um, you can choose if you want to discount amounts or if you want to just discount a percentage. Kind of another cool thing that you can do is you can actually enable a pricing tier. So if you set up a special tier that's got um, some some discounted pricing and things that you want to do, you can have a promo code trigger that pricing tier rather than applying any uh, just a set discount or a set percentage out. You can also choose if you want it to be able to apply to all products or only certain products. So if you wanted to do something like uh, really push your aerial services, you're going to get 25% or $25 off for any aerial orders in the month of May. Then you might do something like uh, just choosing these two aerial products for the for this promo to apply to. Uh, lots of great options in there for you be, to be able to choose what makes the most sense uh, for the promo that you want to run. All right, workflow tasks. So these are pretty cool. Um, these are going to show, these are going to be tasks that show up on an actual order and allow you uh, to kind of see what's still outstanding. I think I've got a good example here of an order that has this order review and delivery. So the way that the workflow tasks is they don't show up on the actual invoice anywhere. So see, we just got our premium photography here, but we've got a task in and it's assigned to Isabel. Um, you can also set due dates to, uh, to workflow tasks. So you could say, hey, I wanted this to be one day after the shoot or one day after the appointment date. Um, it's possible for you to come in and just pick when that due date should be. And then that way it'll appear on Isabel's dashboard. So the person that's assigned to just like photography, um, it's going to show on their dashboard. It'll give them a heads up on, on what the product is called, when it is due, if you've got a due date in there. And it's great for tracking things like, you know, if you want somebody in admin staff to order and review it and mark it when it's done, um, it's an easy spot for them to be able to see which orders are due and which ones aren't. Um, workflow tasks, both uh, the order level and the product level, they'll kind of unlock and show on a dashboard once they're actually ready for action. Um, you can also configure the system to be able to send an email uh, to go out when they're ready. So in this case, it is sending that email and it's always assigning to Isabel. Um, you can have product uh, workflow tasks. So maybe it's video editing or order editing. Um, as the product task, you can have it automatically assigned to whoever is assigned the product. If it's something that makes sense for the photographer to do, um, if it's something that makes sense for someone else on your team to do, then you can go through and actually pick the pick the selection. And uh, if you are going to pay something extra for that work, if it if it's um, maybe photo editing and you're going to pay your photographer because you're not sending it to your outsource, then you can go in and set up uh, a little payout amount that goes to the person who does it as well. Super handy um, to be able to kind of track down and know where things are at particularly if you have a larger team and you have some admins in your office and different people handling different tasks, it's a good way to stay organized uh, on an order and be able to go through and do that. You also have the ability to set up project detail questions. See if I can get down this order a little bit further and show where those are appearing. So on the actual order, they get down and it's kind of as they're wrapping up before they pay or before it's reminding them what they're going to owe um, you can come down and so in this case we're asking if the home is vacant you can set up uh, questions that you do uh, yes no to uh, like what we're asking there you can also just let them type in text so if you want to say hey is there you know anything else we need to know or is there a gate code uh, text is a great one for that um, you can also do a list so if you wanted to do something like which direction is the front of the house, you could come in and say, you know, north, south, east, west, uh, 
in here as the optional optional answers and then uh, or as the list answer and it'll be a drop down for them when they're actually presented it so they'll choose from the options that you pre predefined rather than just straight uh, text or just a yes or no you can also choose if you want to ask these questions every time an order is placed or only when specific products are ordered that's another cool feature so if there are some products that you offer where you want to get a little bit more information uh, up front, when they place that actual order, you can go ahead and say, hey, I only want to ask this when, you know, aerial, aerial photography is up. Maybe you want to ask them if they want to have the outline, the grid outline on the aerial photography, something like that. This is a spot where you could ask that question where it's really specific to only that product. And it's only going to display to the user when they're ordering the products that are that are been predefined. All right, we are going to look at filters so filters are sort of a way to ask a question before the client uh, starts the order and then you can choose what uh, products you want to have after so we're going to do just listing type in this case that's a pretty common use that i see um, so for the photographers that are, that are out there that do a little bit of residential a little bit of commercial maybe do an airbnb you might have a filter set up um, so when you set up the filter this first filter name is basically like, what's the question that you want to ask them? And this type, we're going to ask them what type of what type of listing is it? And we're going to put in our option. We're going to say residential as one of our options here. And we're going to say commercial. And maybe we'll do Airbnb. And so if you had products in here that were set up, um, I'm going to take Ariel as an example and just say commercial Ariel video. We add our little drone and we're going to say commercial Ariel video starts at oh, like, we'll say $600. We're going to spend maybe an hour on site walking around and figuring out exactly how we want to fly it. But we're charging more for this because we know that they're going to be using it uh, in commercial products rather than rather than just normal residential house for sale type thing. So what we would do on our filter to get this set up. So with it set up as it is now, it's just always going to show. Um, but what we want is we really just want that option to show when it's a commercial listing uh, as opposed to a residential listing. So under our filters, we're going to say, hey, if they say that it's a residential listing, we want to turn off our commercial aerial video here. So we're going to go ahead and save that. We're going to say, hey, if it's commercial listing, we're going to turn off all of our products and we are just going to turn on commercial aerial video. We don't have any other commercial products set up yet, um, but right, something that somebody who offers this you to have all your commercial products set up and ready to go in there as well. And so what that does now is over on our booking, before we get going, it's gonna ask them the, the listing type. When they pick residential, we're gonna get the same options that we were seeing before. Now when they pick commercial, you'll see it switch, switches and is only showing our one category that has a commercial product that we have available. It's kind of a nice way to be able to uh, do a couple things here. So one, obviously separate out what products make sense for, for either what type of listing or what type of shoot it is. It's also a really good way for uh, your residential realtors. If you're starting to get into more commercial shoots or, or more shoots, it's sort of a form of advertising for them to come here and say, gosh, I didn't know that Bob did commercial photography. I'm going to keep that in mind. If anybody ever asked me, who do I know to do X? Uh, I know that Bob handles commercial photography. So even if you don't have a lot of people ordering it all the time, kind of like uh, the the advertising that happens with it and having it in there. So yeah, and you can turn filters on or off depending uh, on the cart. If you've got kind of like a more advanced configuration or maybe you've got a couple different carts and it doesn't make sense to ask those questions, that is a spot up top where you could turn those on or off. I'm gonna go through the quick notes really quick here. And then I think we're going to move into questions because I know that we are hitting our time. So the quick note that we're going to add is just going to be really, really simple. And we're just going to say on site. Let's see. Actually, let's do no show. Appointment, no show. 
And we're going to send Ian an email every time that somebody uses this quick note as an appointment no show. And so what that does is when you're in the uh, the order management page and in the notes, notes section, you'll see that our, this quick note is now applies. And if I click this and say, yep, we need to add that, it automatically adds the note in and it also sent me an email saying, hey, somebody just left that there's an appointment no show, something probably needs to happen. So you can use those quick notes for kind of two things. One, just common thing, common notes that you're adding to orders. And number two, notes that you add to an order that you want somebody to get alerted about. Um, those are both really helpful and really great things. All right. We are going to look at service areas super fast, and then we'll answer some questions. So service areas is an air is a spot that you can set up. I think a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this, but you can come in and say, hey, I only want this photographer to work within a certain area. So you'll see you can um, add shapes like I did here with this new service area, or you can just add miles. So when you add a service area, you're choosing simple areas. So that'd be like setting a shape or driving distance. And it'll ask you the couple questions for, hey, you know, we're going to do a 25 mile radius. We're going to do a 50 mile radius. But that's a quick way to be able to set them up. And those radiuses are based on uh, the home address that the person enters. This is also where you can configure those automated travel fees. Uh, so if you've got a flat rate uh, of fee for like this new service area here, it's always 20 extra dollars. Or if you wanna do a per mile rate, you can. Uh, it's worth noting, so the mileage counts one way, uh, just to the appointment. If you wanna charge round trip, uh, go ahead and just double your per mileage cost. Now it's gonna be charging round trip rather than just one way. That is how that is figured out and automatically calculated. And then it uh, shows down at the bottom of their booking uh, when that happens as well. There is travel fees that are added. Uh, you can set priorities here. Um, so in this case, we've got priority one for carry camera in this blue section. I think that Isabel is similar. Yep. So she's also, oh, she's priority 10. So what that means is that anybody who's... Um, set up on our minimum drive time and also our, our service area priority, the system's going to look at, you know, where's the order if it falls into this blue area and if it falls into the blue area, right? So Isabel's area is a little bit wider than uh, carry cameras, but if it falls into it for either of them, if it's in the blue area for carry, she's going to be priority one, where Isabel's priority 10. So if she's available for the appointment, uh, that was selected, then the system's going to try to pick carry. Um, and you can do that in, and you can stack up, you know, different photographers and kind of have different levels of, you know, who's priority for this area, that area, this area, kind of keeps them close to, you know, you can use it to keep them close to home. You can use it for them to be able to work on certain areas. Um, there's also some advanced configuration in here too. So if you want to be able to say, hey, I only want to go to this area certain days of the week that is available. Uh, you also, for your team members, you can set a payout override. So if there's an area that they go that may be further away, you can say, hey, anytime Bob has to go to that area, I want to give him an extra $50 or an extra $20. Um, that is something that is possible for you to be able to do as well. All right, Shay, I think we went pretty deep into the details today. Uh, it looked like there are some Great. good questions coming in. I could see the focus on your face. Yeah, yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was it was there like, oh, let's help him out. Let's get it. Let's uh -huh. get it. Uh, are there any questions that we want to cover live right now? Uh, yeah, I got a couple that uh, we might want to touch on. Um, some yeah. of them you can probably show. Some of them I, I might just explain here. Sure. Um, I'd say probably a uh, one that I would just explain. So uh, uh, can you have a product that says get quote instead of free? Um, so great question. So when you're setting up a price, uh, you have the option of making the price show as a free product. Yeah, so what Ian is showing here. Yeah, here we go. There you go. Maybe. Here we go. Maybe. There, something like that. Yeah. So instead of showing free, can you have something other than free, such as get a quote? And yes, you can. Um, it does require CSS in order to set that up. So if you if you do want to use something other than the word free, uh, shoot me an email and I'll help you get that uh, set up on your shopping cart. So great question, very specific. I like it. Uh, another question, uh, Ian. I guess you can show this one. Uh, how can I copy a product? Oh sure, yeah, absolutely. So copying a product. Um, you don't do it specifically through one product, but you can copy an entire category. 
So as you're kind of going and, and getting close, um, say that, you know, you're going to use, you know, four other options, or maybe these were square footage ranges for things like setting up Matterport or setting up like a Zillow 3D offering. It actually uh, is pretty nice to be able to come in and click this copy category button. And that's going to make another copy of that. And then I can go through and modify whatever I need of this copy. And don't forget, we can drag those up and down, uh, move them around. So if there's a product you want to copy, uh, the best way to do it is just to um, go in and copy copy the actual category and it'll reproduce them all. Uh, and remember that you can make, you know, you can make temporary categories if you need to. So if you just wanted to copy like a single product, uh, you might do something like set up a temp category keep it hidden and you could move something in like I just want to copy my basic photography and then you could copy this copy this category it's going to only copy that one and then you can move it around and do what you want uh, with it afterwards yeah good question yeah uh, another one uh, will my copyright be shown on the order form uh, so we actually handle copyrights a little bit different. They have a little bit of a different purpose in terms of use. So like copyright, that's your kind of the agreement on how the agent can utilize the media that you're handing off uh, versus terms of service. That's going to be like your terms of use. That's more like your uh, like weather, like what's going to happen if it's bad weather and they have to cancel or cancellation policies. It's more like uh, contractual in regards to the order that's being placed, not necessarily revolving around the media. Uh, so we we show the copyright. Uh, when somebody's actually going to access your media ver versus on the shopping cart, we show the terms of use, which yeah, I think I, you showed where to where to set that. Yeah, up. yeah. So we have the terms of use inside the config. Um, the copyright, if you want it to show right before somebody downloads, is over on the business details page. Also, something else that's worth noting: um, I've seen quite a few businesses, and I and I really like this approach because we don't show the copyright here. And there may be something that you want to make sure is communicated to the agent before they book. You know, you can add a lot uh, of text in here and it will it will scroll and let it be. So if you want to have like your you could actually have sections in here where maybe you've got like a general general terms uh, could be like this Oops. general terms. And then you can have a section here for copyright. And all of your text here so that when they're when they're going through, they can see the general terms right away. They can see your standard copyright right away um and be able to go ahead and just agree to that at the time of the order and then the the other copyright functionality of course all still works is all just independent and set up to have it show if uh if need be yeah uh this should be a quick one uh i can't find where to delete a category oh yeah we we are sneaky on that what can i say uh underneath status if you actually click on that drop down if you go to archived, it will hide. It will hide uh, that category and go away. Um, let's see. I can do it to this little temporary one here. We can go to that status, and instead of being active, we're going to go ahead and just go to archived. And now it is gone. Gone. All right. We think got time for a couple more. Sure. Yeah. I know keeping you guys a little bit late here, but yeah. Thank you guys good. for hanging That's in with us. I figure that yeah. There's there's always good good info in the questions. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I do get this one a lot when I'm helping people set up uh, their shopping cart. So I wanted to touch on this one. It says, uh, how can they have a uh, scheduled calendar event uh, that's a personal event uh, without mm. taking a full day off? So you may have seen in, in our system, you can do a full day off uh, from the calendar. But let's say like next week you have a, like a dentist appointment, um, but you, you want that to be blocked out on the, the shopping cart when an agent comes and schedules. Uh, so as long as you put that on your Google uh, calendar and, I, and the, it's the calendar that's connected to our system. I know some people have you know three or four Google calendars and they might have a personal one. And so if you put something on a personal event, but you have a like a photography uh, calendar connected in our system, we don't see that. So just make sure it's on the same uh, the same calendar that you have connected in our system, and then make sure it's set to busy. Google's a little sneaky. Sometimes they uh, they'll set an event to free. They have two different statuses when you make an event. It's busy and free. Uh, for some reason, if you make a, an appointment or some kind of event on Google and you don't see it in our system, uh, if you edit that event and just look at the status, just make sure it's set to busy. And uh, that's usually the issue if you don't ever see it. But yeah, so as long as you put it on that Google calendar, uh, we'll observe it and then we will schedule around that. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like what Shay was saying there. You know, if we had, had something that we needed to block off this whole afternoon, we might have a two to five. This busy is the piece uh, when you're in more options in here. So make sure that is the calendar that you have connected. And then here's the busy and free. As long as it's set to busy, uh, the system will 
block that out, including travel time. So if you put, you know, like a dentist appointment, like what Shay said, if you put the location of your dentist appointment, it'll actually make sure that it doesn't schedule any shoots before your dentist appointment that you wouldn't be able to drive to uh, after you finish it. So pretty fun stuff. Yeah. This one you may, you may have touched on, may have missed it while I was typing away over here. Uh, is there a report where the taxes I collect is reported? Did you? Yes. Uh, yeah. Show that. Okay, perfect. yeah, I don't know no. if I went to the actual report, but yeah, if you go to business perfect. and sales tax, um, you can click the sales tax collection report up at the top. You'll find it also in your business reports tab. Um, this is going to show you what, what tax was collected, order totals, uh, everything that you need to be able to get that paid. And actually something that uh, is nice to just touch on quickly while we're here is that it gives you the ability to commit the tax so that once you've said, hey, I've paid this, if anything changes about that order in the future, that we'll know to go ahead and create a new tax record that's either going to add add some more tax that you need to pay if your order went up or if you guys if it like canceled maybe it was an order right at the end of the month but you'd already you'd already collected tax you remitted your tax for the month uh, and then it cancels we'll go ahead and add that as a as a negative line on there so you can get the refund for that tax that you no longer collected so uh, yeah using this and using the cutoff date and committing the tax I highly recommend it I think that uh, that covered most of the ones. I have a couple other little ones, but I think we're. I think you may have touched on most of those. Yeah. Why I was uh, just chatting. Awesome. Well, yeah, and you know, if we didn't, uh, if we didn't get to your question and, and you still have it, uh, we've got our little chat widget down here in the corner. You can chat with uh, Heather or mine, and they will hook you up and take care of you. Um, email us, call us, our support team. Always happy to help. We have a lot of information about the shopping cart uh, in the help center too. So underneath support and help center. Uh, if you just type in keywords in here, like say we wanted, we had a question about filters, um, you can see creating a product filter, choosing filters on carts. Uh, if you just go to shopping cart, there's a general FAQ uh, about just setting up shopping cart. Um, but we've got a lot of really good, uh, good information in here. If there's something that you saw today and you said, gosh, I can't quite remember how Ian did that. Uh, very likely that it's in the help center. We touched on um, a lot of the shopping cart stuff inside the help center. You can get there from support and then help center, or of course, uh, chat us, call us, email us. We're always happy, happy to help out. And if you're trying to do something, you know, more advanced, you know, feel free to reach out and say, Hey, I'd really like to spend 30 minutes, you know, talking with an expert about, you know, trying to do what I'm trying to achieve in the shopping cart. We are happy to get some time scheduled with you and go through, uh, answer some one-on-one -on -one questions and really kind of work with you to get it dialed in the way that's going to work best for your business. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, Shay, for yeah, thank uh, you. being my co-host and being the being the pro on the call today. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Yeah, of I course. think it's been uh, a great webinar with a ton of info. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. And we ran a little long, uh, but I think it was probably worth the time today. I hope so. And uh, be looking forward to sending out a recording of this uh, for those of you that uh, are on the call or for those of you that couldn't make it. Uh, thank you for watching after the fact, too. We appreciate it. All right, everybody have a great week and uh, yeah, get out there and let's do some shoots. Let's let's do let's do some shopping cart upgrades and do it. Thank you guys for being HD Photo Up customers. We appreciate it.